In this exercise, we'll learn about implementing the assignment local service. Here's the objectives of our exercise. We'll implement add assignment as well as update assignment, and then we'll implement the finder methods and then silence the generated methods. Here are the steps that we'll be taking in our exercise. We'll implement the two methods and then the finder methods, silence the generated methods, do a final code review, and then rebuild the service. And with that, let's start with our exercise. So in this exercise, we'll be implementing the assignment local service. Before implementing the method for adding assignments, we're going to open up the local service base class, the assignment local service base impl, and then take a look at the generated add assignment method. So you can come to your modules on the left. If you don't see your source folder, but you did run the build service command, you might have to right click on your modules to refresh the project. And hopefully this source folder shows up. So we'll open this up and we'll come all the way down to Java through our package. And then we'll go into service and we have the base right here. So we can look into the assignment service base impl and we can see something like this. We can also look into our assignment local service base impl and we have the add assignment. And this is how we are adding an assignment by using the persistence class to update a newly created assignment. So for the first part of this exercise, we'll be implementing add assignment. Go ahead and open up assignment local service impl. So it's different from the base impl, but you'll find this in the service impl package. This is what the empty class looks like over here. And we'll implement the add assignment in the class as follows. I'm gonna actually copy this over from our solutions document, and then I'll walk us through the code. So this is the add assignment method that we'll be implementing. It takes in a group ID, a title, a description, a due date, and a service context as the parameters. So from here, the first two lines, we're getting the group and the user from the service context and the group local service, which is what we referenced in our service XML. We're also getting the user from the user local service, and this comes packaged with most entities. We'll also generate a primary key for the assignment. So for this, we're using the counter local service and we're incrementing in the assignment class, then we must create the assignment. By creating the assignment though, this doesn't persist the entity because it's not being stored back into the database. After we create this assignment, we'll have a reference to it over here, and then we can populate the fields with the information we had before, as well as the arguments. Finally, after setting all of that, then we'll use add assignment to add this assignment to the database. We'll now implement update assignment. So we'll come over here, copy it from our solutions. And right here, you see that we're passing in an assignment ID. This is a reference to the assignment that we're trying to update. So given the ID, we're going to have to run the get assignment method in order to return the assignment that we're pointing to. We'll update all of the fields with things from the parameters, and then we'll use the update assignment method to persist this back to the database. Now we'll implement the finder methods. If we define finders in service XML, then it automatically creates the corresponding methods in the persistence classes, but we can't access those persistence class methods directly from the controller layer. And so we have to implement facades in the service implementation class. So I'm going to be copying it from our solutions, but we have a number of finders over here and I'll walk briefly through each of them. But we'll stick this in after the update method. So these are the finders that we have. First, we have get assignments by group ID, and this is what you would expect it to do. We pass in a group ID and it will return all of the assignments that fit that group ID. We have one with two more parameters, a start and an end. And this is for pagination. If you're given 100 search results and you say the start is 20 and the end is 40, then you're returning the results between index 20 and 40. Then we have a get assignments by group ID with one additional parameter, and this is an order by comparator. And so for here, we can stick a comparator in there to define a specific ordering for a given search result. And so you might want to sort based on modified date by create date. And you can do that right here using the order by comparator. We can also get assignments by keywords. And so in here, we see a parameter for keywords and we will be calling the finder, but a dynamic query over here where we're searching by keywords. And then the start and end also represent pagination and the order by comparator gives us flexibility to order by a specific criteria. We also have get assignments count by keywords. And so this isn't actually returning a list of results, but this is returning a long and dynamic query count is run here to count how many results that we get when we run the search. Finally, we also have a get keyword search dynamic query. And right here, we're allowing a list of keywords to be entered in. And then we are running a dynamic query on the keywords to, to search by those. Now, finally, we must silence the generated methods. And so we'll be adding the following snippet to the end of our class. 
paste this in. And these are overrides for the add assignment and the update assignment that passes in an assignment as the parameter. And we are silencing it by throwing unsupported operation exceptions. We'll do a final code review. We see that there aren't any red underlines or missing imports. We'll come up here to source and then format. And then this will indent for us. We'll go ahead and save the file. And then we'll rebuild the service by clicking build service in the Gradle test at the right. And the reason why we're rebuilding service is that we added some methods that weren't already present in this module. We'll have to fix some missing imports over here. And so we can hover over each of these and then we can choose each of the imports. For group, we're going to import this from kernel model. User, the same for kernel model. List, we'll have to import Java list util. Comparator, we'll use kernel util. Dynamic query, we're going to import this. Validator, we'll import from util. Restrictions factory util, great portal. Then a disjunction also from great portal. Then we have portal exceptions. And then the date that we'll import from Java. Java util time and not SQL. And at the very top, move this package declaration here. We'll click build service again. And then this should run without problems now.